What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today I'm finally bringing you guys the Diablo 3 tier list for patch 272, slated for season 25. It's always easily one of the most requested videos that we get every single season. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say this season's weird, man. It's really weird. There's tons of builds that are gonna do a GR 150 solo with not really extreme amounts of Paragon. In my opinion, this is probably the most strongest theme we've ever had and the most fleshed out, most diverse, like the most actual complete package where there's, you can use it while you're leveling, you can use it end game, you can use it for augments, there's items, there's uh, variations of those items and there's lots of different things that you can use it for, speeds, pushing, group play. So a complete theme. It's still small in the grand scheme of things, but it's nice to get a complete seasonal theme. I updated about 70 builds across all the different classes, so always check back for the latest and greatest. There might be some missing from the tier list, like I don't have 17 versions of Wave of Light and 17 versions of Tempest Rush and, you know, Zuni, and there's a few builds that are missing, but all the ones that I personally play and love and want to cover are here. I think you guys will be satisfied with the majority of the tier list and what we did. I did a little differently this season around also. Also, if I could get a quick like on the video, you have no idea how much it helps out. YouTube is a fickle beesh. Are you guys ready? In three, two, one, booyah. The tier list for season 25. So you might notice a few things, okay? Um, number one, this is my tier list, right? So this is gonna be things that I think or things that I think my community will enjoy. You might also notice that it's Christmas themed, okay? Yeah, I'm in the holiday spirit. I put a little red H there for hardcore, which means it's hardcore friendly. That doesn't mean that other builds can't be hardcore friendly with some effort. Maybe you drop COE and you put a Unity or you use your class's damage reduction item and then you know swap it with the damage item. There's a lot of builds that you can tank up, but just in general, I just put a little H to give you guys some guidance. F, F to pay respects, or F equals fun builds. Builds I think you guys will like. You know, as a streamer, I get to come in contact with tons of people every day, and I get lots of different opinions, and um, these are kind of builds that people do say that they have fun with, and builds that I also think are fun. So. It's just, just a guidance, right? Obviously you can have fun with a lot of these builds. This is just to give you guys some direction. I'm gonna take you guys through each and every build on the list here. Again, these are just the builds that I wanted to cover this season along. These are the most relevant builds, I'd say. So, Inez, Mystic Ally, the most ridiculous build of the patch. I think it is head and shoulders better than every other build, even if it's just by one tick, you know? I think it's just better. That's why I put it in the S plus tier aka the god tier um it's gonna be hard not to start it just because it has a crazy leveling experience crazy speed build you know group potential solo push god it bounties everything right key farm it's really good at everything it's a one-stop shop for you to kick ass this season so i think it's just better in general than everything else i also put it in the f for fun category the fire version for pushing is fine but the speed builds in particular are super fun. You got the, the wave of light, the water ally is really fun to watch and visually it's cool. So I, I gave it the fun tag. It is fun and it is tanky, right? So it is hardcore also. Also, before we continue, like when I said a lot of builds are going to do GR150, like basically everything in the A plus tier and higher is going to do a 150 solo in my opinion. Um, anything below that is just probably going to need some work to get there. But there's just this, the theme is the strongest theme we've probably ever had. It's crazy. I could see there being tons of 150 clears. Now it's just like splitting hairs. Do you want to do it easier or do you want to have to put in a little bit more effort or whatever? So just bear that in mind. Okay, there's really nothing bad anymore. Um, it really depends on what you think is bad, right? So S tier, Laud Wave of Light. I think it's tanky, it can be, and I think it's very fun to play. Um, you get to jump in and blow stuff up. Um, a lot of the speed builds this season, I use the on death explosion effect and it looks super cool to drop Wave of Light and then you have another explosion on top of it. So Laud Wave of Light, oldie but a goodie, still badass. Heaven's Fury Classic, I like to use the pig sticker. Uh, the current meta uses like the Norvald's Fervor set. Um, I don't like that build that much, so I don't cover it, right? I don't have it, but I, I know of its power. I have tested it, um, and um, it's there if you guys want it. 
but I like the pig sticker classic version. I think it's it's pretty fun overall. Not enough fun to get the tag, but oldie but a goodie, right? Um, hardcore Lod Bomb Thorns. So again, you can build really tanky and all you gotta do is stack a lot of Thorns damage, use the Thorn skills. S tier build, one of the best builds to farm Paragon with. So that's also good if you're into that, solo Paragon farming. Um, Marauder Multishot is the new version of the build. I might add the Cluster Arrow version you know, at some point. That's the good thing about having the website. You know, I could add builds as I want from here. So we have a nice foundation and then I can add these little niche builds in there. Um, it's really good actually. The modern multi-shot build's fun. It's like a Super Saiyan version of UE multi-shot. So it might seem cumbersome that you have to drop the sentries every time. You do have to drop the sentries a lot, but it's actually pretty fun for speed farming and for high level farming, for solo pushing. It's not bad. That's why I gave it the fun tier because it's different but familiar. Um, next we have the Lawn Twister build. If you're like me and you're still bitter that they took away the Meteor Shower Wizard, this is the closest thing that we have to a channeling build. Um, I think it's very tanky, so I gave it the hardcore tag, and it's super fun to play if you like that type of channeling playstyle. Obviously, if you're not into channeling builds, you think it's F or F you blood for putting this there. The A plus tier, we got the new Flame Blade Wizard. So if you don't know, the wizard went from a channeling build with Death Wish. Now it's a kind of like a generator build with Flame Blades. You attack really flat, uh, fast and apply your combustion stacks. It's tanky, it's a wizard build. It has tons of shields and survivability. So it definitely gets the hardcore tag there. I didn't give it the fun tag specifically because it is kind of cumbersome with how you're watching all your resources. Um, if you like to juggle a few different things, um, then you might like it. I, I do enjoy Flame Blade. I like almost every build on the list. This is why I'm covering it. I'm a big Diablo nerd, so if you guys don't know, <laughs> the next one we have is Whirlwind. The Whirlwind Barb is definitely hardcore friendly. You could even use, like, I think I use Stone Gauntlets on my build, and it's easier than ever to keep up, you know, the Wrath of Berserker full time because we have more cooldown from the legendary Soul Shard mechanic. Up next, it does get the fun tag F for Frenzy and Fun. If you know me and you know my content, I've been praising Frenzy for season after season. I think it's just the perfect Diablo build where you have to worry about your positioning, you have to stack like on hit effects, like life on hit to keep you alive. Um, I'm always thinking about my next move, jumping in Oculus Rings. And of course, you can just beast the hell out of Elites. It has crazy single target. Um, it does it does need a little bit more AoE clear, but it has just a beast single target. And then when a Rift Guardian spawns, you absolutely just lay them out, right? So this is one of my favorite builds in the entire game, if not my favorite. And then we have a Con Thorns, which can be fun and tanky if built properly, but I left it there. And then F for God DH, man, people all the time in stream say how much they love playing the God Demon Hunter Strafe build. So it had to get the F for fun. And again, you can swap that COE for Unity if you want to be a little bit tankier. There's things that you can do to circumvent your survivability if you really want to, right? F for Paj, man, oh man, the Paj Tempest Rush build is, just, there's no resource issues really. You have this big stun and explosion mechanic. And once you learn how to figure eight around mobs, you definitely, when you start getting the hang of it, you definitely get to feel that progression, not only in your gameplay, but in your, you know, GR success rate. So I, I think Paj is great for speeds, low level speeds. Um, even for group play, you can play like a hybrid support version. Paj TR is amazing. Up next we have Laud Corpse Explosion. Now I would give this an F for fun, right? But people complain about it in my stream a lot. Um, so I decided not to give it the F tag, but it is dope. I mean, I love Corpse Explosion. It's fun for speeds, for pushing. Um, you do have to line up your cooldowns a little bit more. You are playing around your basically land of the dead type of cooldown. So if you don't like these like cooldown based builds, you might hate it, right? But it's super strong. It didn't, it's not really going anywhere, right? It's this powerful build. AOD Rothma, one of the builds that got buffed this season. Now, this build is super duper fun, but it's super duper squishy. Even if you build tanky, it is just a wet paper towel. And if you don't mind dying a few times per GR, you might like it. You know, the Army of the Dead spell is really, really cool in my opinion. 
but I did not give it the F tag because people will get pissed probably. Up next we have Lod Poison Scythe. A lot of the Lod builds you'll notice have hardcore tags because you can you can stack stone gauntlets, ice climbers, you know, usually Aquila or any of you have more room to play with legendaries in a lawn build so you can fit in a lot more survivability items. Okay, so this is this doesn't change. It's basically a lot of poison scythe, really good. Spirit Barrage, one of my favorite builds in the game. We made it one season, I think when it first came out. Extremely fun to play. It's like a visual purple explosion of spell effects. And um, I love the mechanic with, um, you know, John and juking and building up your stacks on the Rift Guardian and blowing them up. I gave it the hardcore tag because you can use both weapons this season. You can use the Vuz Juicer, which gives you the Plobotomize Rune. Plobotomize gives you more health back. So I found it to be a lot more tankier than it ever was. And I had no problem really with Mundanugu anyway. But now that it has this double weapon you can use, um, it's even better, right? You don't have to use the Sacred Harvester anymore. That's why we can use double weapons. All you need is really three stacks for 60% damage reduction with Lakumbas. So they kind of change it. If you don't know, you might want to watch the video or read up more on the changes. Corpse Spiders, the new, new, new build that got added. They buffed the Queen's Grasp item and it plays, in my opinion, just like Spirit Barrage with the Arc here set, right? You can build it really tanky. And um, since it's so similar to Spirit Barrage, it doesn't really stand out. Or you can't really see anything visually. You kind of cast, use Jaunt, go to Oculus Rings, and um, use your spiders to tag elites, I guess. But it's, it's like you almost clearly can't see anything. I wish it had more visual punch in the build. But it's like a generator Arakir build. It's good and strong, and I think it has a lot of potential. Um, we'll see how you know people take it next season, how far they go. Um, hardcore Lod Hydra build. So if you like Hydras and um, tanky, you can build it really tanky. Really fun to play. I love using the Mammoth Hydra with the build and kind of positioning myself to enemies. I didn't give this the fun tag because it could be cumbersome using the Fire Hydra. People might get pissed off. Up in the A tier, we have Lod Dagger of Darts. I think it's really fun to play. I love the dart mechanic. They did change the way it works now. You can use any generator, which this might even be an A plus tier. I needed more time to test this which is good with the website, right? We can just bump it up if I think it needs to be moved up or down. It's like a living, breathing tier list, right? This is just the video to give you guys a base and then we can change it later. So they changed the way that depth diggers work. It works with all like your generators now, all your primary skills now work with depth diggers. So you don't have to use that one specific rune with dagger darts. You can use different runes and I think it just adds a little bit more fun to the set. Typhon Hydra, it is similar in power to the Lod version. I just think the Lod version is slightly ahead of it, and that's why I put it one down in the A tier. Bone Spear Necro, still doing really good. Solid for speed, solid for bounties, solid for pushing, all around a good build. You build up your attack speed, stun the mob, teleport away and throw your spears at them. Now we have more attack speed with the new soul shard gems. It does feel a little bit more fluid to play, but you do run out of resource more because now we're attacking even faster. Yuliana EP, this would have the fun tag and the tank and the tanky tag since they did buff the survivability, but I just feel like people don't get it and um, it hasn't really caught on. So we'll put this as the dark horse to so the dark horse tag, right? It's stronger than people think, tankier than people think, more fun than people think. But um, yeah, Yuliana's just been kind of getting outshined by now Inez is just way in the S plus tier. You know, Inez is the Bugatti, you know, and Yuliana just feels like he's a rundown junker now, right? So, but I promise you it's super fun for speeds and everything if you want to give it a go. Uh, Wuko Wave of Light, it's inferior to Lod Wave of Light, but I did want to put it on the list since it's this, the Hadric for next season. Shadow Impale, man, people do say that this build is so damn fun. All the time I get positive feedback when I recommend Shadow Impale, and now they have more Wave Clear this season. They changed the 6P set, so you will find it more enjoyable. Lod Bless Shield, I think the build's a lot of fun, but there can be times when you're just sitting there throwing, just dinking and dunking. You're just standing there and just, just throwing your shields at the enemy and it just bounces off their head and they're not doing any damage, right? There's sometimes where it just doesn't feel as fun as it could be. But again, you just use Pony and it's fun for speeds. 
fun for um, solo pushing and all that stuff. Um, another build that's maybe under the radar, maybe needs a little bit more juice in future seasons. Uh, Leapquake Barb. So Leapquake's amazing, man. It, it Again, I think it's really fun too. Um, powerful. I love jumping around, smashing things, but you know, people do have to manage their leaps um, and, you know, hitting the enemy with Seismic Slam from the belt, managing your loot socks, like your leaps, like I was saying, and you actually only have survivability really by dumping your fury. So you have life per fury. When you dump your full bar of rage, you're getting health back. So you have this weird, like, I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm full health again. I'm about to die, full health again. So people might not like it. I didn't want to give it the fun tag, but again, you know, I'm a Diablo geek. I think it's dope. I think you should try Lee Quick if you haven't played it. They did change the two-handed um, weapon with Earthquake on it. Now it's a cubable affix. You used to be, have to be able to wear it, but now you can put it in the cube, which just allows more flexibility across the board. And then we have Lod Hoda. They got a nice juicy buff. They buffed the Remorseless weapon. And it should probably be in the A-plus tier, honestly, but I just don't think it's as good as a Whirlwind or just just maybe under Frenzy. So a lot, of, a lot of my tier list is more like how I feel about the builds. If you hadn't noticed, I just don't feel Typhons as good as, you know, Lod Hydra. I don't feel like Lod Hoda is as good as Whirlwind Barb, so it's just I would just put it down one, right? But it could probably clear basically the same GR. It just doesn't, like, it's just not there. You know, I think Whirlwind, the, high, the best player in the world played Whirlwind, and the best player in the world played Lod Hoda. I think Whirlwind would win even by one second, so... I would play anything on this list because everything here is fun, basically, right? I think it's fun. You just smash. It's like a damn. You get the hammer and Super Smash Brothers and you just go ding, 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 and you just run around and kill everything. And now, again, with the, the Soul Shard theme, when you think about the new mechanic, you think of, wow, we can get lots of elemental damage, lots of lightning and fire damage with the theme. If you have a Stone of Jordan, you can turn that theme, those fire and lightning into any resource, right? This theme gives you flat damage from the gems. Damage is just multipliers. This theme gives us tons of attack speed. We have two attack speed gems. We have more cooldown than ever before. So th these kind of things help other classes than others, right? So uh, attack speed might help Shadow Impale more because now you can hit faster in your COE cycle where it might not help Leap Quake with attack speed, you know, so... Yeah, that's kind of I took into everything into account. I updated a lot of the builds on the website and I hope you guys like the tier list. In the B tier, we got Jade, Zombie Bear, Firebat. So Firebat is here because they've actually in the last patch buffed the Aura Cure set. So I haven't been able to test it because it got buffed after the PTR was down. But just looking at the maths, it should be pretty solid. Pretty, pretty good push build. Helltooth is here. Helltooth got buffed. Um, Pet skin proc oculus rings, you know, the Shinkrani mojo now will buff witch doctor damage. We got the new, um, the dreg gem. So that's another soul shard, but the pet, think about pet builds getting buffed. The dreg gem buffs pet builds by, I think, 25% now across the board. So, and they have a stacking buff on top of that for your character. So the Hell Tooth actually is pretty enjoyable now. Veer's Archon. Solid for hardcore, really tanky. If there's a wizard build, you're probably gonna get shields from somewhere, right? Lod Frozen Orb, um, here in the B plus tier as well. Ha, Lod Rapid Fire, you can build this so damn tanky. I think it's fun, but you're basically a stationary turret. So if you ever wanted to play like a human turret, this would be the build for you. Um, UE Multishot, it's like, oh, it's getting outclassed by Marauder Multishot right now. But you could still play UE, you know, think about every class has their own leaderboard, so it's there and, you know, you're only competing with other UE multi-shots, it's not too bad. Roland, I think it's both tanky and fun to play. It's basically like the the horizontal Hoda, right? Hoda goes up and down and smash smash and then Roland swings left and right. It's just that sweep attack build, so Roland's dope. Invoker next, Invoker's good, Rake or Hoda, it's Toxic, I don't know why it's on my list. <laughs> I don't like the gameplay, I just put it there. Uh, Seismic Slam is like really, really fun. And you have this like blue effect and we always call it Super Saiyan Blue. And now Super Saiyan even tacks even faster than ever before. It's using the Might of the Earth set. You kind of just hop around and Seismic Slam and you have this big 50 yard cone. I think it's 50 or 40, maybe 40 yard cone. I'm sure you guys remember. You get this big like wave clear 
thing and it's really cool and there's different combos you can do with the soul shard mechanic to spice it up a little bit and then we have ik hoda i have ik hoda down here it is it can be tanky but it's significantly weaker in my opinion than lot hoda like we talked about earlier that's why it's down one but it's probably close in actual <laughs> push potential right um and then hammered in here hammered in is you know technically better than it's ever been but it's still hammered in it still has some issues to deal with but like we talked about with the extra cooldown from the mechanic you can keep your cooldowns up a little bit more you hit a little bit harder it does feel a lot better in general just the build plays better i hope you guys enjoyed the tier list this time around i did want to add some extra things in there instead of just showing you like what i think is fun or what i think is tanky again we got the website bloodshed.com i can easily copy and paste this in any kind of section that i want and i can change the tiers you know if i feel like damn whirlwind is doing better than a lot of other classes i can move it up to the s tier if i wanted so just check back often for the latest and greatest i also scaled back a lot of these random builds that i had here for now i'm probably going to make an off meta section in the future but i feel like it was being too convoluted like i want to get everybody knowing what the best stuff is so for solo paragon or for bounties i think whirlwind's the best for bounties for key farming i think frenzy's almost as good as whirlwind but i put the little best tag here so I have this amongst all the classes where right? I just wanted to kind of trim the fat so people can find the builds that they want, right? If you want to play some obscure leap quake speed build for key farming, that's cool. And I support that. I'm a, I'm a big off meta guy. I'll probably have an off meta section down here with like a drop down menu. So it's not like just, you know, muddling up all this. I like how clean it looks now, basically. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help me. I'll be streaming all week i'll be playing diablo and lost ark all week leading up to the season start and then we're gonna go full-time blast diablo 3 this is bloodshed and i'm out of here peace